So with the much hyped Godzilla vs Kong coming out on March 26th, I was encouraged by my man Henrik to tackle one of the worst cinematic outings to represent either of those characters. And quite frankly, I don't think you can actually get lower than today's film. Ho 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 ho, delightfully devilish, Seymour. <laughs> Yes everybody, welcome back to Delightfully Devilish, the show where we discuss films that all at once meet the criteria of being the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'm your host, Jukebox Harry, and today we are looking at one of King Kong's worst cinematic outings. Ape is a 1976 monster movie which was rushed into production to coincide with the release of Dino De Laurentiis' remake of King Kong, and that film sucked, so just imagine how shit this film is. Ape was shot in just 14 days and had a budget of only $23,000. Now that is a low budget for any film, let alone a co-production between two countries, which is also meant to be a monster movie. The film was also originally released in 3D, and it was released in South Korea under the title King Kong's Great Counter-Attack. It was also re-released in America in 1982 under the title Attack of the Giant Horny Gorilla. And on top of all that, the film isn't actually called Ape, it's called A.P.E., which was done in a deliberate attempt to spoof the title of the recently successful M.A.S.H. Now, A.P.E. apparently stands for Attacking Primate Monster. Jesus, that's a stretch. You'll see the name later pop up a few times in the intro credits. If this sounds familiar, it's probably because you're thinking of director Mimi later, the director of Deep Impact, possibly the most boring disaster film to ever gross over $300 million. However, she did also direct On the Basis of Sex, which was perfectly solid. Her dad directed this film, and a lot of her family members were involved in the making of this movie. So apparently, delightfully devilish films just run in later blood. And when the characters start talking, you can immediately pick up the individual rough audio quality of each character. Were you there on the island when they caught him? Yeah, sure was. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. He's something to see, I tell you. I know. Yes, the titular ape truly is something to see. Just wait until you see why. It's almost a shame to put a beast into captivity and, and then put him on display for everybody to gawk at. How is that almost a shame? Oh, shit. I don't think anyone's ever said, oh, shit, with any less conviction than that guy there. Then for reasons that aren't explained, everything explodes, and then the titular ape, who is obviously far bigger than the boat that blew up, rises from the water and does an innate boogie before wrestling with a very obvious fake shark. But really, it just looks like they're slow dancing. This extended scene of phony beast combat was put in the film in an attempt to take a shot at Jaws, the blockbuster from the previous year. Terrible idea, do not take a shot at a good film when you're making APE. Also, Ape himself doesn't actually make any noise the entire time, and that's something that recurs throughout the entire film. There's a generic monster movie theme and some casual sound effects, but Ape himself remains completely silent. He journeys to land where a South Korean soldier seems hardly the slightest bit worried by his presence as he begins to smash buildings which are obviously made out of miniatures and are even more fake than his costume. Only $1200 from the film's budget was actually allocated to constructing miniatures for this film and it's incredibly obvious. While the very fake buildings are being destroyed, Korean locals flee in absolute silence. Whoever was in charge of sound on this film, they really screwed the pooch. Ape flails around and throws random things around for a while. Now keep in mind, we got this character's reveal less than 10 minutes into the film, and there was nothing amazing about it, there was no hype build up to it, they just threw him out there because they know that the only thing this film has to offer is its visual gimmicks. And uh, it's a very obvious sign of how little expertise these filmmakers have. And then Korean Airlines gets a cameo. <laughs> this is my first visit to the Orient, and my first movie picture outside of the United States, and I'm very, very excited. I understand we start shooting on location right away. The plot of the film is a Hollywood actress going to shoot a movie and then inevitably going to have a run-in with a giant ape. The more things change, the more they stay the same. So you're traveling in your usual style. Hey, listen. This is the best I could do. I'm a reporter, not Charlton Heston. Mate, you're not even B-movie actor Christopher George. Then this Korean guy who apparently has been staring at the ground his entire life suddenly notices a giant ape in his midst, which came out of nowhere, and while everyone panics, some random gets a phone call. It's very important. Yes? Oh, yes. Yes. Is that it? Just that one word? Yeah. Okay. Yes! 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 It was important. Is anything the matter? Important? Some farmer had too much to drink this morning, I'm afraid. This whole scene is a group of inexperienced, non-English speaking actors trying to appease English speaking audiences, and you can tell that they aren't particularly skilled with a language. 
But then again, if we were trying to be the slightest bit realistic, we'd probably have them speak in their native Korean and have English speaking audiences suffer through reading subtitles for like just a little while. Nah, that's too much to ask. Eat your breakfast, kids. No! Eat my boots! Or I'll become a monster. Mom. That bit part actor is actually an even more convincing monster than Ape itself. Now what kind of bullshit are you trying to hand me? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a footprint five or six feet long. Another staple of this film is characters having phone conversations with obviously nobody on the other end of the line. The filmmakers have obviously done this so that they only have to get away with writing half the dialogue. This is Korea, not Scotland. The Loch Ness Monster couldn't make it over the Berlin Wall. Why did you name three completely different countries all in the same allegory? What the hell was that? Well, I, I'll tell you what I think it is. Well, I'll tell you what I think it is. Well, are you going to tell us or are you just going to keep repeating that line? Publicity stunt for a, some movie they're making. I don't understand. Is this you being meta? What the hell are you doing on the floor, Smith? You're just going to cut it there? But, but it was so important that we find out why he was on the floor! Why are you running? Why are you running? These kids break into a playground which is locked off and along comes Ape which might have you hoping that you get to see some kids killed but instead the film treats us to repetitive and loud classical music and the sight of kids who really don't know how to actually use a slide. Colonel Davis here. Yeah. Yeah. I probably don't need the scripts, it's just a word. Have any of our people seen this supposed monster? No, I thought not. Completely denying the existence of the monster. Okay, so we're going to copy that from Jaws as well. If you should bump into him, ask him if his name is King Kong. Why would you put that line in there? Why would you actively want to remind audiences that they could be watching a better film right now? Ape stumbles across a snake. Apparently this is meant to be a giant snake. Apparently in the universe of Ape, South Korea just has these lying around on obviously fake trees. And then he actually throws it at the camera. Yeah, sure, this snake hit the camera and broke the illusion that we're watching a film. Yeah, let's keep that in there. God, it's actually rare that you find filmmaking of that kind of low standard, but Jesus Christ, they really just didn't care about this film. And the snake peacefully slithers away like nothing happens. Are you sure this isn't some sort of gag? Honestly, with the production values on the miniatures and Ape's costume, I would much sooner believe that this is some sort of gag. Then we're suddenly in some kind of Akira Kurosawa film where Asian warriors are having a showdown, and it looks like the only part of the film to be made with any sincerity. Hey, look! Wonderful dubbing, people. Also, I'm not sure if this is supposed to be the movie the actress was brought out for or an entirely different one. Again, the film never clarifies this, but I want to lean towards the latter because I can't understand why a successful Hollywood actress would fly over to Japan to star in a samurai action film in the 1970s. Like, that's just not a thing that I see happening. The actors all start firing their prop weapons, which naturally shouldn't do any harm, and flaming arrows that they happen to have lying around. We also see the same guy firing arrows in cuts that occur one after the other, but A protects himself with dance moves that would obviously inspire Drake later in life. And a few humans try to ram it, but of course the camera just cuts when they're about to hit him. Ape uses every single trick in the book to avoid being the slightest bit good, like, at all. The hell with the press. I'm gonna smoke this goddamn cigarette. That is a pretty good contender for the worst line delivery in this film, but there is a lot of competition. Then we have a hang glider which Ape almost grabs, but he flies off and then Ape jumps and claps in slow motion for what feels like the longest time. I thought he was meant to be killing these humans, not cheering for them. Action please. You slut! One more time. Come on. One more time, you no, bitch. No, no. Whore! And that is the best moment of acting we get in the entire film. Not because it's good, but because that's the only time anyone puts any effort in. And when this guy does, he hands it up to 11. Easy, Greg. I mean, you gotta, you gotta be gentle. Gentle! This is a goddamn rape scene, and you want me to be gentle, Dino. The writers even tried to take a shot at Dino De Laurentiis. Just how savage of them. I mean, you're taking a chance being out here on location. And that thing. King Kong? Whatever. He's <laughs> running loose and he's killed people. I'm not sure what surprises me more. The fact that this guy is so calm that there's a giant ape on the loose, or the fact that people keep referring to this beast as King Kong. Jesus Christ, did this production company learn nothing from the lawsuit filed against them by the makers of King Kong? Why do they want to keep adding insult to injury? Well, don't be ridiculous, Tom. I'm tangled with apes all my life. How? I thought you were an actress. Have you been acting in jungle bestiality movies? 
Hey, I'm not junky. I'm dead serious. So am I. I don't believe that. Just trying to protect you from that rapist out there. Come on, must everything you say be a joke? Yep. I don't believe you love me. It's ridiculous. Of course I love you. Well, then why do you make up stories about Buddhist priests and... Maybe I'm afraid. Maybe I'm afraid the way you love me all the time. Move towards the city. Do not bring valuables. They will only slow you down. Repeat. Please evacuate the building. The audio just cut halfway. Uh, you know, this film keeps on finding new innovative ways to have major production issues. I haven't seen a film do that since Inchon, another South Korean film. Then we have an extended collection of shots depicting some of the worst extra acting you've ever seen as Koreans all flee the giant ape, intersecting with shots of ape occasionally smashing set pieces, but still not harming anyone, like not even one person. The only people killed by ape so far came from that explosion at the start of the film, which for all we know wasn't even caused by ape because that doesn't make any sense. Monster movies are meant to have monsters killing people, so that makes me think these filmmakers don't know what a monster movie is meant to entail. And even though the army has ordered an evacuation, the filmmaking keeps going. They do the scene where the guy attempts to rape the girl and she runs away, only to be caught by Ape's incredibly fake hand. What goddamn language is that? Yes. I just think there was a little loss of energy on that last take. Maybe try one more. Yes. Feeling is here that you could be a bit more positive. What? What? They send the helicopters in, and the cameras are sure to linger on the shots of this for a long time as a display of something the filmmakers actually spent money on. <coughs> See what I mean? This film keeps cutting at very inexplicable times, halfway through musical pieces a lot of the time. Oh my god, what's happening? Well, your acting career is off to a rough start with your debut in this film, that's what's happening. But oddly enough, like Jessica Lange, who made a much criticised debut in King Kong before going on to win two Oscars, actress Joanna Kearns started off her career in this film and then went on to have huge success in seven seasons of the sitcom Growing Pains before then going on to become a successful TV director and founding a Women in Film Awards. Like, good for her. I wouldn't think anyone making this movie would go on to have any kind of career. But she did. The next scene is mostly just repetitive sound effects, shots of ape, shots of trucks, shots of helicopters, characters saying generic dialogue, and once the helicopters find ape, he ends up doing the swim. He eventually hits one helicopter to my surprise, but unsurprisingly it's an obvious fake, and there's this too. We never see him throw the grenade, we never see the explosion, I, I, I should have expected that at this point. And the actress escapes. This about sums it up, doesn't it? Why? What? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I'll keep you posted. When he looked at me, there was something oddly appealing in his eyes, a gentleness. Get someone that looks at you the way the actor in that terrible monkey suit looks at discount Jennifer Lang. The film repeats the evacuation scene using the exact same audio and what actually appears to be the same footage from earlier as Ape makes his way to town and begins smashing the least convincing set pieces yet. And none of the wreckage is ever exciting, so that's a pretty major sin this film is committing. At this point, we're 70 minutes into an 86 minute film and I am so bored that I'm really struggling to get to the end. This is a slog here, people. Ape eventually finds the actress again and everything goes up in flames. Hey, yo, this shit on fire. Burn, baby, burn. Disco Ferno, burn, baby, burn. And the fire culminates with Ape doing a weird boogie woogie, which is so tragic that I'm gonna put some terrible boogie music in as I wrap up the end of the film. Who that knows the time of day, so he has to say it's time for you and me to boogie! Killed him. The end. No, Ape is not a good film, so I'm not going to ask that bloody rhetorical question. It's an early example of a mockbuster, a low-budget film trying desperately to capitalize on the success of a far greater film coming out around the same time. In this case, Dino De Laurentiis' remake of King Kong. And like I said, I didn't enjoy King Kong. Ape, on the other hand, you know, I can't call this one of the worst movies of all time because I didn't hate it that much, but still, it had no redeeming qualities. 
I hoped there would be some fun in the ridiculousness of a man in an obvious monkey costume smashing obvious miniatures, but I was just bored of it. Just as I was bored by the lack of character deaths, bored of all the pointless dialogue and boring phone calls, bored of all the continuous cuts back and forth between two simultaneously boring stories and in constant awe of the repetitively innovative production flaws. At the end of it, Ape did not remind me of King Kong, it reminded me of Carnosaur, another mockbuster, another low budget attempt to capitalize on a far more successful film which didn't have any ambition whatsoever except trying to get that little bit of money without having any respect for its audience. It's, it's just such a boring piece of shit. And I give it half a monk out of ten for committing the ultimate sin of being boring. And that does it for today's episode of Delightfully Devilish, you guys. If you want to see more episodes of this show, please hit that subscribe button. If there are any movies you want to see me discuss on this show, please leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, until next time, I have been your host, Jukebox Harry. Peace. It's the last member of the DK.